Now at five, child labor violations in the state, the cookie company accused of overworking kids, just how much dough they're asked to dish out. Plus, everyone's in agreement that this is not a flawless process. The public demands answers after five Utahns freeze to death, the emergency action city leaders call for, and the flaws they point to in homeless services. And you just kind of feel helpless. House fires spark up in the state, the flames kicking families out of their homes just before the holiday. Live, we're there for you. ABC 4 News at 5 starts now. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here today. A handful of Crumble Cookies locations are in hot water today. The Department of Labor flagging four locations in Utah for violating child labor laws. ABC 4 Northern Utah correspondent Cade Gardner joining us live from North Ogden tonight. Cade, tell us exactly where the feds are saying teen workers were mistreated. Glenn, Emily, well, it happened at 11 different locations across the country, four of which are here in Utah, but altogether those 11 locations are facing fines of $58,000. Now, those four stores here in northern Utah are located in Bountiful, Centerville, Layton, and Ogden. The Department of Labor says, quote, violations ranged from employing some minor aged employees to work longer and later than the time the law allows to assigning others to operate potentially dangerous ovens and machinery. Now, I stopped by all four stores today. None could give me a statement on camera, but two locations let me know that they are under new ownership and one manager on duty said they currently don't hire anyone under the age of 16. I also reached out to Crumble Corporate today. They just sent me a statement, I mean, moments ago, and I want to read part of it to you. It says, quote, we are actively working to understand what has occurred at these specific store locations and will take appropriate action to ensure that all of our franchisees are fully compliant with the law. We apologized to any of our franchisee employees who may have been affected by this situation. Now, coming up at six o'clock, I'll take a deeper dive into what the Department of Labor found, as well as what Com Crumble Corporate has to say about the franchisees that violated these labor laws. Reporting live in North Ogden, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Cade. Well, new at five, a group of citizens finds that South Salt Lake police were reasonable in their response to a man with a gun ending in a deadly shootout. In September, police came to Jeb Muir's house after his wife called concerned about his mental health. They left after determining he was stable, but when they were called back later that night, police say Muir's behavior took a turn. He locked himself in the home and police say he fired at them, hitting an officer. A shootout followed and Muir was shot dead. The South Salt Lake Civilian Review Board says the officers should be allowed to return to the force. The district attorney's office investigation is ongoing. So my first thought was, okay, it's over. Like that was my life, right? We're hearing tonight from the solo skier who lived through an avalanche and an eight hour rescue up Neff's Canyon. Travis Hausner escaped the dire situation last week with his life. Thanks to a nearby backcountry recreator who happened to have the exact right skill set that was needed. Hausner shouting for help for nearly an hour trying to dig himself out until an off duty fireman heard him and was able to reach rescue crews. But this snow sports lover says this accident will not keep him off the slopes. I'm super grateful for all the people that, that you know, got me out of there. But, you know, I wouldn't be me if I didn't want to go out and ski again. So first thing I'll probably do once I heal up is go skiing. Hausner taking to social media saying this was the worst pain of his life. Still in recovery, it could be some time before he's able to head back up to the mountain. Ooh, you know, it's something you love if you're willing to be in a hospital bed saying I'm ready to go back at right. it as soon as I'm better. Mm -hmm. All right, time <laughs> now for a look at the forecast. The Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. And it is uh, cold out there today, Alana. Only getting colder. Our next storm system will target us for our holiday week, but we are still battling some bad air out there right now. We start in Cache Valley where they are socked in with single digits. It just looks frosty on our Utah State University camera. That Logan view kind of giving you an idea of what we're facing. Temperatures made it into the 20s. 
20s, sitting at 27 degrees, 30s in Ogden, 31 in Salt Lake, same number in Provo, and 47 in St. George. So we've got a mix of temperatures and a mix of air quality. Unhealthy air in Salt Lake and Cache Valley, unhealthy for sensitive groups. For those with respiratory issues, you know you feel that. You want to limit your time outdoors. Elevated particulate matter with moderate air in Weber, Box Elder County, as well as Duchesne and Uinta County on the eastern side of the state. Our next storm system, though, is going to help clean up our valleys. We've got cloud cover out there with a few embedded showers heading into tonight. The clouds, indicator of increasing moisture. Our next storm prompting several watches and warnings, including the wind, the winter storm, accumulating snow, and wind chill. I'm going to break them all down so you know what to expect. They're going to pack a punch. It's coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Emily, over to you. Thank you, Alana. Emergency action from the mayor of Salt Lake City after homeless advocates say five people died since Wednesday, freezing to death in that bitter cold. Mayor Aaron Mendenhall announcing an expansion of the two shelters in the capital city, adding 25 beds to each. This is temperatures dropped to deadly lows. Shelters in the state capital city and beyond hitting capacity and mayors temporarily banning on open new shelters continues into 14 months now. Advocates battering the mayor for answers and demanding change. For this smaller portion of the population and the even smaller portion of the population who may say no to shelter offers day in and day out, but for these very cold temperatures, the, serve, the system does not serve them well enough yet. The mayor says changes need to be made in how local homeless organizations communicate need to their higher ups and that the issue is not bed availability or lack of money, but staff shortages. We're encouraging the exploration of volunteers, um, capable volunteers who could augment that staffing need in the meantime. The mayors of South Salt Lake and Mill Creek also declaring emergency action, allowing shelters to expand beyond the 25% cap allotted by state lawmakers. They are adding 45 beds combined, for a total of 95 among the three cities, leaders say it will take some time until these beds are open. And a family in Taylorsville left without a home for the holidays after a fire burns through their home, burns it into ruins. First responders surveying the damage left by the flames, saying it's extensive. Multiple agencies responding to several calls of a house fire. Around 10 last night when they got there, the back of the home was engulfed. Heather Lloyd, who lives nearby, says she saw neighbors pounding on the door to get the family inside out in time. There were flames coming out the back of the house, eventually through the top of the house, out the front window, like everywhere. It was nuts. Two people were hospitalized. Their condition at this point is unknown. The cause of that fire also still under investigation. And unfortunately, this was the first of a series of house fires in northern Utah. Six homes lighting up with flames in the night and into this morning. ABC4's Ali O'Rourley in traveling across counties today, speaking to the families whose holidays will be looking very different this year, Ali. Ellie, these fires have just been causing immense damage. I mean, here in Provo, I can still smell the smoke left from the fire behind me. Now, in West Valley, there was $150,000 worth of damages in a home, according to West Valley Fire. In Weber County, $2 million worth of damage, according to Weber Fire. And you can just see behind me this home completely engulfed in flames and this garage completely engulfed in flames. Neighbors say the families who was lived in the home behind behind me just left with only the clothes on their backs. Multiple families left without a home for the holidays. It's just like moving so fast. You just kind of feel helpless. Luke and Emma Gleaves say they woke up last night to screaming and tires exploding. They didn't know what was happening till they looked out the window and were face to face with the flames. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Luke, Luke, Luke. Neighbor's house is on fire, like, we gotta get up, we gotta go, we gotta get out. They say thanks to firefighters and the small gap between their garage and their home, only the garage was damaged. But their neighbors, the Molinero family with three teenage boys, are left with rubble. This is more, like, devastating, more traumatic than you realize just looking at it. Provo Fire believe it started with the Molinero's carport catching fire. Theirs isn't the only home in flames today. It's one of six with homes being destroyed in Salt Lake and Weber County. It's crazy that there's been so many in such a short period of time. 
Fire officials say heating is the second leading cause of U.S. home fires, saying heaters can be especially dangerous. We want to make sure those are about eight feet away from anything flammable when they're running. And we prefer that those are plugged directly into the wall because they draw a lot of current. And when the fire hits, the Gleaves say there's nothing you can do but watch as your life goes up in flames, only to see it black and charred the next day. This feels kind of just a reminder of the tragedy and how it's, it's not just like a house, a few things burned down. It's like people's whole lives were affected and it's just kind of sad that it's just sitting there. Now, neighbors tell me that the Molinero family put all of their savings into fixing up that new car that is now just completely damaged and all of their Christmas gifts, everything that they had ready for the holidays are gone. Now, there is a GoFundMe for the Molinero family if you would like to help. That's on our website, abc4.com. Reporting live in Provo, I'm Ali O'Rulian, ABC4 News. Thank you, Allie. If you rode front runner today, you may have seen one of Santa's helpers. Yes, each year, jolly old Saint Nick steps on his sled and gives the reindeers a little break. Uh, Santa Claus catching a ride on Utah public transit, spending the day with UTA. He gives out candy canes and poses for pictures with riders. He, Miss Claus, and a helping elf stopped uh, downtown Salt Lake Valley throughout the morning and even the afternoon. And the big man in red also offered some advice for the week leading up to Christmas. Better stay on that nice list. We're in the home stretch. We're in the final stretch. Got to stay good. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Santa. Miss Claus also said his annual ride along on the front runner serves another purpose. He and his elves take inspiration from the train and they craft their toys for the boys and girls, hoping for model trains to pop up under their tree. Still ahead, the wife of a jailed Navy officer speaking out why Senator Mike Lee joins her in a call for action to the Department of Defense. There's that live look from Utah Lake. You can see the cloud cover. Doesn't that just look wintry? It's icy, it's snowy. We're gonna add to that scene with our next storm system behind it. Very brutally cold air. I'll tell you when and who will be impacted in Utah's most accurate forecast. 